Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. In the last episode of this series, I asked you guys about this spooky eye idea and the response was surprisingly very positive. So this week I'll work on that AI companion. By the way, loves that concept. Many of you came up with this spooky AI co-pilot. What a great idea. The webcam had its own lenses per se, but as some of you know, I have a huge collection of these sorts of things, so I went and checked if I had a better solution on my sorting boxes. I'm a bit of a high functioning hoarder. And sure enough, I found something very good looking. Now, to be perfectly honest, I was going with the eye idea anyways. You guys know me, I love some weird design choices, but I loved that we were all so in tune on this one. Also, I think the dragonfly having kind of an eye, it kind of adds to its character, like it becomes uh, being a being and not just a machine, but that's an even crazier concept. After poking around and testing shapes and ideas, I glued the webcam body shut with CA glue and its original screw. Then I gave the whole body some light sanding to remove imperfections caused by the super glue and any extra residue. On the lens opening, I'll attach this resin printed round pen right here. But in order to make the hole for the lens on this super brittle material, the best choice is to actually glue it on a sacrificial surface. I made a guide hole on my drill press with a 4mm bit and then I made it wider with a spade bit, moving slow and being extra careful. The spade bit was of course not the same size as the lens, so I had to use my Dremel to enlarge that hole aiming for a snug fit. The Dremel got me most of the way there, so I made the finishing touches using some sandpaper. Once the fit was perfect and even maybe a bit too tight, which I can always solve later, I glued the resin piece on the body of the webcam using some super glue. Then some baking soda was used to fill the gap in between the pieces. Now the surface finish you get from baking soda is not ideal, so I finished it with some light curing putty, which is the best solution for quick and small fixes. And then I covered the screw holes using super glue and some tiny discs of acrylic. But when I tried using my disc sander to remove the extra material, the sandpaper decided to quit his job. Now, to be honest, this maintenance procedure was very overdue. With that solved, I could remove the extra material, finishing with some sanding by hand, and it was time to make the webcam body look interesting. Beginning, of course, with some panel lines. So I grabbed a compass and using a marker, I made some lines on the surface of the webcam. Once I was happy with it, I grabbed my snap knife to begin carving those panel lines. I've been using this technique a lot lately, using a snap knife to create the guide and then going over it with a nail salon tool to make that line wider. This webcam body is made out of ABS, which makes everything much easier and the lines very precise. I of course don't want this to look overcrowded, so eventually I felt I had enough lines going. And it was then time to make some shallow holes using a pin vise. I first marked what I wanted this weird futuristic rivets to be, and then carefully made one by one using the pin vise without of course going through the material. 
Then I put back the main lens to check the looks and with that be able to decide on the position of the next one, which I decided to put right on top of the first one. Like maybe the main one focuses on ground stuff and the smaller secondary looks upwards, checking for potential enemies on the air. I made the hole using my Dremel and the fit was perfect. There's a bit of a leap to the lens border so the process was actually very easy. Then I decided to add a third element to this spooky eye. As it will be sitting on the right side of the dragonfly, I included one extra shiny dark lens facing outside. Maybe this one has heat vision, I don't really know. Now there's a novel hole on the top of the webcam that I left open to decide what to do with it later, but the best solution was actually to cover it with the tip from a tiny plastic spoon which fitted perfectly there. And again I went with super glue plus baking soda to make the rough joint, sanded it and using again some light curry putty to make the surface smooth. There was also an open hole under the main lens and I couldn't find anything to fit in there so I quickly modeled and printed some simple air vent to be glued on its place. And on the back of the eye I came up with a simple way to attach it on the inside of the cockpit. And it was finally time to go for a coat of primer, to see the magic happen. Now at that point I actually went back home, it was the end of that work day and the primer had to set anyways. On the next day, with the primer set, I retouched all of the lenses attachment points. As I said, the fit in some of them is a bit too tight, but I prefer to leave it like that and do the final adjustments after the painting process, when I'll permanently glue the lenses in place. But I also wanted to see how it was going to look with every lens installed and I think you guys wanted to. Then I used some hot glue to keep the sphere in place. and the clear plastic dome came on top. And this was the result, couldn't be happier. But I wanna hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments if this eye is spooky enough. There was still a bit of time left this week, so I started working on this which will be the biggest challenge of this build, the wings and the wings holder. And I'll stick to this piece which I chose in the beginning of the project, made out of ABS, which stands for Amazingly Bold Subscribers. You know, for those who aren't afraid of hitting the like button. <clears throat> Now, this of course is not a chopper, meaning the wings aren't going to be spinning around, and this is probably the impression this round piece gives to the viewers, but I kinda like to play with that idea. Also, I really like the big round shape sitting on the top of the body. I decided to sandwich the pieces together, so I began by creating a gap using some laser cut acrylic shapes. Then I went and 3D modeled a bunch of stuff. My idea is to attach the wings holder to the body using a couple of M5 bolts. For each individual wings, I'm going for some M4 hardware. This, I think, is a crucial step, because I'm worried that the wings are going to be extra heavy. I could be wrong, but it's better to be safe than sorry, as I always say. It's kind of hard to explain how these parts go together, but suffice to say that this is a delicious sandwich of griblies, laser cut parts and some 3D printed stuff with some bolts and nuts sprinkled at it. To put these pieces together I used the good old super glue, but to be extra safe I included some tiny little screws to reinforce the joints. 
this could all be an overkill as I'm not entirely sure of the material of the wings but they're going to be big so there's probably some torque being applied to this round holder and that kind of gets me worried let me know in the comments what you think this is really not my area of expertise I then redrilled the M5 holes and made a matching shape for the top of the body, which was glued on the bottom of the rod wings holder. As you can see, there are two M5 bolts keeping the holder in place and there are six M4s on top, which will be shared by the four wings. And I actually want to hear everybody's thoughts on this. Is this enough for the weight of the wings? I'm definitely looking for places where I can reinforce the structure even more. So please let me know your impressions in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.